We just made a quick pit stop to drop off our snow machines. And when I came into the driveway, I didn't really realize until I got here that our shelter logic was not here. So I was looking all around and was very confused as to why the shelter logic was missing. Um, and I looked over, glanced over to the left and our shelter logic unfortunately didn't do well with some of the winds that they had. So it's over there, but we're on a trip right now and we're just not gonna be able to assess that for the time being. So it will have to stay over there. But I guess good news is it doesn't look to be in that bad of condition. See, I didn't see it at the beginning. That really sucks. Oh my Well, God. no, I pulled in, see where I pulled in with the rig? And I was like, wait, what? That's like a hundred yards away from where we I was super, it. but it actually doesn't appear to be in that bad of damage. Cause look, I pulled in here. And I was like, just trying to figure out what was wrong with the situation. In case of a flying trampoline. That's what it reminds you of, flying trampoline. Okay. Gonna lightly put these off. Let's go, baby. You want me to go first? Yeah, you can go first. I was just asking if you wanted to go to a drive through for coffee or anything. Popular gas station today. We just made it out to the cabin and we are moving today. We have both trucks. We have two trailers. This one is currently stuck in the driveway and it took us a little while to get here. We ran into some problems with the trailer brake controller in the Silver Tundra, but we finally made it. It is about 7.30 and what we're gonna try to do, since there's a lot of snow here in the driveway, like always, is we're gonna hike in, we're gonna get the tractor and hook a strap to it and see if we can pull the trucks in. We'll see how it goes. Come on, Bandit. Come on. Okay. Yeah, he's still, you left him in here. Come on, Bo. My God, everyone's stuck. Oh my gosh. Wait for me, babe. Wait for me. Should have brought my gloves, huh? Yeah, I should have brought gloves, too. ice cream here. All right. That'll get him going. I guess I'll back down. It's pretty fast. That's third gear. Well, we made it back into the cabin last night. I want to say the driveway won yesterday. I know you guys are tired of seeing us dig our way in, but the snowblower, the tractor was really helpful. It still took us three hours. Three hours from the time we arrived to get back all the way with our stuff here. It's only been a week since we got back from our trip to Oregon, so we are just totally exhausted. But we're celebrating because this is... This is the official move. We have officially moved in and we have a bunch of things to take care of around here the next few days. We definitely got to get the snow addressed and a bunch of unloading to do. I'm just going to get her, get her swarmed up. What? Off the deck? What you doing?
Last night, or I guess it was earlier this morning when we were sleeping, we heard some sounds. It almost sounded like something brushing up against the cabin. I just assumed it was squirrels or something of that nature since there's a lot of wildlife out here, but it was actually a moose. Woke up to a moose this morning. She made her way all the way around and was eating a bunch of bushes. So I'm glad that we uh, knew that before we let the dogs out. Who's been out here? Who's been out here, a moose? We've got all kinds of stuff up here that we're unloading. Those are totes and we bought those used. It looks like they were used for storing like motor oil and we're gonna be using those for multiple different things but the main purposes is gonna be hauling and storing coal and firewood and we got a lot of other stuff on the trailer. Errol mentioned this is the move and that's correct. The only thing we have to grab is like the chickens and the cat but we brought everything up here. This is our freezer. This is going to be the secondary heat source for the shop, the Quonset Hut. We've got all of our summer tires we brought up. We've got our Kubota generator and we've got more of the totes. Let's fire the tractor back up and let's get the rest of this unloaded. How's the tractor working for you? Are you liking it? It's good, but no matter even if you have a tractor, everything still requires hard work. Okay, I'm gonna try to yeah. I'm gonna try to hook the forks right here and lift it up a little. Okay. Yeah, you, know, you just slide a piece of wood just right yeah. so I can get underneath it. You know what I mean? Under the side? Or this like this? We saved the best for last. So what this is, I said it's our secondary heat source for the shop. And this is like a ginormous coal stove with the pallets and the metal skirting that goes around the stove. We're looking at just over a thousand pounds, which is a lot. So we went and picked this up and they loaded us up with a forklift and then we needed to use our trailer. So the first time we unloaded this thing, we used the Polaris with a winch and it was very sketchy. It was up on top of a stack of pallets. And then after we went and picked our tractor up in Oregon, we had to get this thing back on. We first tried to use our neighbor's tractor. It wouldn't lift it. So my neighbor helped me devise a little system and we used a come along to get this on and it worked actually pretty good. We're gonna see if the Branson will lift this thing. I'm gonna spread the forks out a little bit and uh, we'll see how this goes. Ah, that was my finger. I think as long as you're 
careful. You could ratchet it if you really want. Heavier on that side, huh? Yeah, but I don't think it's going anywhere. No, I don't think it is either, as long as you're smooth. <laughs> Much better. That was awesome. It didn't even feel like there's anything on the forks. That's crazy. This thing has so much power. It feels more stable is what it is. Like it's not gonna flip. Yeah. The only thing that's inconvenient right now is from like the tip of the forks to the back of the backhoe. We're no, you're huge. Over you're 20 massive. feet. We're like 24 feet, probably 23 feet. Like pull it up like this. Is that what you think? Oh gosh. Nice thing just slam it. Oh my god. You want black? It's black. Right on the outside. I wonder if that paint's supposed to be chipping like that back there. Yeah, the paint's chipping here too. What do you mean? Where's the red? The red goes on the outside. Oh, the red's skirting? The red the red surrounds it. Yeah, I don't know why that's chipping on the front like that. It was chipping really bad. You can just call them. They'll probably tell you. Well, the fire bricks are in good shape. They're not broken. She's huge, hon. Huh? They're not broken? That's good. No, look how big that firebox is. Oh, shoot. That's... Dang. It's huge, huh? I didn't know that they could break, but they could. I see that now. Nice stove. This one was made by DS Machines, I think is what they're called, or DS Stoves. And they're in Pennsylvania. And this thing is awesome. I think this is their Energy Max 160, I believe. And this thing is a coal stove, or it's also like a coal furnace. So it has these little suction tubes, and it'll suck in the cold air from the bottom, and it'll blow it out the top and kind of circulate it. This stove uses absolutely no electricity, which is something huge that we wanted. And it, like I said, the thing is just a beast, but we got red skirting for it, like a dark maroon color that's gonna cover all the sides. We're really excited about this thing, and I'm also really happy with how the new tractor has been performing for us. Well, the Branson is awesome. We have not owned a Branson tractor. We did have a Kubota tractor five years ago when we lived in Oregon and it was awesome it was a lot smaller than this one it was a 24 horsepower and just smaller this one is a 48 horsepower and it is huge so this thing with the backhoe on there and the forks it weighs like over 6,000 pounds and that's just with air in the tires there's no liquid in them so this thing is extremely heavy and there's quite a few reasons why we picked this tractor over other ones and one of them was for the price with the Branson, you can get just more tractor for your money. And more tractor for your money means lifting capacity and attachments. And the lifting capacity on this tractor is insane. So this tractor with the front end loader is capable of lifting 2,700 pounds, which is just like unheard of. So it's crazy how much this thing is actually gonna be able to lift for us. Our old Kubota, which was a 24 horsepower, I don't know what the capacity was on that, but it was, minimal it was probably well under a thousand pounds another reason we wanted to go with this one is it does not require def fluid for the engine and it also doesn't require you to like stop the motor and do regens on it as long as you're running this thing at like a higher rpm it kind of just regens itself i don't know if you could tell from looking at it through the camera but this thing is just like absolutely massive so we got the backhoe for it and that's like the bigger backhoe this one can dig i believe nine feet deep which is really nice we got the forks for it those are four thousand pound forks we got the bucket that comes with it we got a cutting edge put on there and that's a 72 inch bucket and then we got a seven foot snow plow and we need to assemble that if it was already assembled i probably would have used it last night and got the driveway and it would have been pretty easy but we're going to put it together now and we got to do some cleaning up around here because we got a lot of stuff to unload and we don't really want to do it in like a foot of snow yeah like a coffee Plow's pretty easy to put together. It's just a couple pins. I'm trying to figure out though, for as far as angling the blade, there's a pin here that you can take in and out, but there's a cutter pin holding it in. So that doesn't seem really realistic to have to take that out, that out every time, but we will see. Uh, I think we just gotta put the springs on there and this tractor has what's called like a skid steer 
front end attachment so it's like quick release you just hit a couple levers and then you can just drop whatever you have on we'll drop the forks and then we'll hook up to the plow this thing is extremely heavy duty Well, this is really exciting stuff. I know uh, Eric's uh, gonna be a little monster on that machine today. We are really happy for that because we do have plans to do quite a bit of groundwork and some development on this lot. And it's just not really realistic where we're at and towing wise to go pick up like an excavator or a skid steer. I know the tractor's not the same thing, but it's pretty heavy duty and I think it's definitely gonna be really useful to have around here. And a special thank you to our neighbors who were nice enough to help us load up our trailer with their tractor since ours was actually here we dropped it off here on the way home so we didn't have access to it back at our main home i guess this is now our new main home still a lot more to do Can I toss it to you? Yeah. Not very good on my end. What's this? I'm, I'm I don't know. It. If you wanted to like wrap it. All right. I was on the all-star team when I was like 12 years old, so. Way under. Damn, it's high up there. I don't know what to do. All right, I got the drone stuck up in a tree, sadly. This has only happened a handful of times. We're gonna see if we can retrieve it. Our attempts earlier did not work, so hopefully this works. shut off and then I went to turn it back on. I didn't wait for the glow plugs to start up. Maybe that was it. And it was well, you were like able to push this. Yeah. Your tires were like in the same spot where like you push past. Do you know what I'm saying? Where we've ever even plowed. Yeah. Yeah, it does a really good job. Well, it's the end of the day and we are bringing in all of our canned food. This is everything back here. It's been heated with our diesel heater for probably like over two days now. So we gotta get it inside because we do not want it to freeze. And we also gotta make sure it doesn't freeze inside too. So it's very heavy. Oh, this one's not that heavy. <laughs> so as we get them in here, we can start. Them. Those ones might have to go like right at the top because you can't. That's what I'm saying, yeah. We can start putting that. Why must you be so heavy? These are going on the tree. Oh, sure thing. 
That's actually so Oh, right there. I mean, we can always do, I didn't really have it in the agenda, but we could always do some organizing, but that was gonna be more once we got back. We're bringing in a lot more stuff tomorrow and we spread out the canned food because it is so heavy. Pretty sure it's probably like well over a thousand pounds. I don't know where anything is. It's fantastic. Check and I just out. packed it less than 48 hours ago. Torch. There's those hand numbers you wanted. It's gonna be like a fun pack or something. These are the chick peas. Eric's getting to work pretty early. He's clearing a spot for our shelter logic that we have to retrieve. The dogs have been settling in pretty good. Bandit, for some reason, the first time we brought him here, he just like loves this place and he, it's probably all the wildlife there's to smell and then he really likes this wood stove. He likes how much heat it puts out. So he's a dog from the South and he enjoys warm weather, not necessarily an Alaskan breed. Bo on the other hand, I don't know what it is, but he's not really that fond of this place yet. So I'm hoping that it grows on him. Hey, Bo, what are you doing? Probably gotta figure out a better spot for him. Uh, we just have him kind of stashed in the corner since he gets afraid of the fire. He doesn't really like loud sounds or too much heat. Um, I don't know. I don't know how he likes this spot though. I did want to show you something pretty funny because it's going away. Bo has the ability to grow longer fur in between his toes in the winter. So we call him wig feet and they are already slowly retracting since we were headed into spring. This tractor is a beast. It is like almost unstoppable. These mounds I'm pushing up are just huge. And it took me a little while to get used to snow plow. We have 8.5 hours on the tractor now, but I think I got it down pretty good. I was able to do the driveway. I really like the snow plow. It works really good. It's extremely like uh, thick metal and it's heavy. Another cool thing I really like about this tractor and it was kind of one of the deciding factors in getting it. Actually, when we were looking to get these tractors, it was between this Branson uh, a coyote tractor and a Mahindra and then I narrowed it down to the Mahindra and this Branson and then the final thing came down to the transmission so this has a hydrostatic transmission which is basically like an automatic transmission you have a pedal you push to go forward you have a pedal that goes backwards and then you got your uh, four gears so you got really low all the way up to a little bit higher the Mahindra was a standard transmission so you had to shift it and I gotta tell you I'm loving this hydrostatic transmission going back and forth hitting that uh, snow berm it's just like a piece of cake so I'm loving this tractor and what I just did is we cleared out an area that we're going to put our shelter logic and as you saw in the beginning of the video our shelter logic flew literally like 200 yards from where we put it up and when we put it up we kind of knew that we didn't secure it we were like we're going to get back before it gets too windy so i just threw some snow around the side obviously that didn't work it got windy so it's over there in the trees we're going to get the scandic and we're going to see if we can pull it over here and we're going to put it right here in this area i just cleared out
to walk on this. Hey, I think this is gonna go well, my friend. Minus the whole setback from the beginning. In yeah. fact, is it possible to pull it this way through your old track so you avoid those little sticks? I'm gonna pack, let me get a little trail on. Well, I think we've been defeated. We're trying to figure out different ways to move this thing, and I think we're causing more harm than we are good. We've ripped one of the center posts off, so I'm gonna have to weld that back up eventually. But I think what we're gonna do, since we've only been able to move it like 20 feet in like an hour, is we're gonna just let it sit here, and it's tucked into these trees. Hopefully it doesn't go any further with the wind, and then once the snow melts, we'll be able to drive the tractor in here and hook up the bucket to it and kind of lift it and pull it out, which is unfortunate because we have a bunch of stuff in that trailer and my plan was to put like all my tools and stuff underneath the shelter logic. So we're gonna have to find out a new plan, but I think that's next on the agenda is getting the trailer unloaded. That's the only piece that got damaged. Those and the adapters. Well, Maybe not the adapters, but the little connectors. Yeah. She's fine. You want me to hand them to you? We threw in a few items when we were packing at night and I kind of forgot about them, some of our kitchen stuff. But this is a few of the coleslaw cans and they're partially frozen, but they're probably fine since only half of them is frozen. I don't know if you can see that. Interesting, huh? We got the rental trailer again. We rented it for a week, but we're not gonna actually use it for a week. The plan is to get everything unloaded and we're actually realizing that we don't have a lot of space here. So a lot of the stuff is gonna go on the deck, which is okay, because it, it can freeze. And then we're gonna go home tomorrow. I'm gonna return this trailer on the way home. And then we got more packing to do there and we're gonna make another run back out. Was that a good coffee right there? I don't remember it. This one? Yeah. That was actually really good coffee. Oh man. <laughs> oh my gosh, I almost missed a set, man. Have you like oh. not had enough coffee this morning or something? What? <laughs> the tire is comically flat. It's like as flat as they come. Flat tire? <laughs> no, I know, but it's just really flat. It's funny to me. Flat. All right, let's go open the Connex and see if we have any room in there. Damn, my back. Really? They're uh, just being weird in there. The birds are singing for us today, huh? Full on spring for the birds, huh? There's a, I think there's a lot of birds here for what Keep going. That's good. I just don't want a flat tire motor. That's like all I ask for. All right, see anything? Any visible nails or anything? Oh, right there, look at that. Freaking bolt in. <laughs> It's not just a nail, it's a bolt. I think that was what did it. Came on something. Snapped it. So we're changing a tire on the trailer and this trailer of ours has sat up here pretty much since the fall because we bought that uh, deck over trailer and that trailer's huge and it wouldn't fit at our property with this one. And we left this one up here knowing it had a flat tire. So we're fixing it, there was a bolt in it. Kind of a cool little hack if you have a dual axle trailer, you don't actually need to use a jack to change the tire. What you can do is just drive this first tire up on a couple blocks of wood, or if this one's flat, you can drive the back one up and it jacks up the back for you. So I'm gonna go inside, I've got my tire repair kit. We'll put some air in this bad boy and hopefully she's good to go.
Look it. Cleans it out. So these, you gotta fit them through there. Like that. Okay, we'll just dip the whole thing in there. Okay. You wanna go in most of the way. Pull it out. You get the old school way like my dad. Look at that. Perfectly sealed. tackling is cleaning up this area for our chickens and originally we weren't going to use this for the chickens then we were going to use it as a temporary shelter i'm pretty sure now we're going to be using it as a permanent shelter not necessarily in this permanent location or where it's at right now we have been kind of going back and forth originally we weren't even going to bring our chickens up here we were actually going to eat them so we just felt like maybe it was going to be too much to have the chickens with us this year with all the new things going on but guess what chickens are coming so they live on and this will be this will be their home so i'm excited to get them in here We're making breakfast before we hit the road. I have been wanting to try this oatmeal. We'll call it a bake. It's an oatmeal bake and I've got some bananas and birch syrup on top. Eric and I have been slowly but surely getting all of our kitchen stuff kind of put away in the cupboards. I'm still kind of like figuring out if I like them or not. I feel like they're a little bit mysterious. You don't know what's in there. We gotta go pick up the chickens and the cat and we will see you back at the other cabin. Check that out. Pecans. <laughs> 